iOS or Android. The debate of the last decade, but why not add a third option to the ring? Linux phones. That's what Pine64 has been doing for years now with their Pine phone and many other products. They are probably the most successful company producing Linux phones. Sorry, not sorry. Today, they have announced their brand new PinePhone Pro, an upgraded PinePhone starting at $399, and I wanted to walk through the details so you know what to expect hardware-wise, software-wise, if it's a good fit for those of you trying to avoid big tech, when you can get it, and our thoughts on it all together. You don't want to miss out on this, so let's get started. The previous Pine phone wasn't meant to be a powerhouse, and in some ways that held it back from being that dream alternative to iOS and Android devices. If you want to learn more about the original Pine phone, Short Circuit did a review of it I'll leave in a description. The Pine phone Pro takes it to the next level, with significantly more storage out of the box, a faster hexa-core processor, a bit more RAM, and an overall cleaner, more premium build, including Gorilla Glass 4, a 13 megapixel rear camera, and 5 megapixel front-facing camera, a more premium backing to minimize fingerprints, and some other minor changes that we'll look into when we get our hands on one. It's also worth mentioning there are efficiency improvements, which I'm all about in something called Suspend State, which will allow the PinePhone Pro to receive calls and SMS in the background without using much battery. You know, like every other phone. And I almost forgot, there are kill switches for those of you who want to disable radios on the fly. We can't test the performance yet, but we've been told by Pine64 that using the interface, watching videos, opening applications, and browsing the internet is pretty much on par with recent mid-range Android devices. Super Tux Cart, PSP, and Dreamcast emulation are supposedly working well, and they've even done some light photo editing when docked to an external monitor, which is a large selling point to this device. So that's the hardware situation. It's definitely an improvement, but I would look at the Pro label as Pro for the Pine phone. This competes with budget offerings for other manufacturers, not necessarily the pros of flagship devices. Pine64 here is competing against other Linux phone, which is currently mostly just them, so this is kind of the most pro phone you're gonna find in this realm. For me, the hardware is fine, I don't do much on my phone, but for some of you, this may push you away from a device, and you know what? We're both valid. The software is where things get fun. Like I said, this runs Linux, specifically Manjaro with KDE Plasma Mobile. This is the same OS from the original Pine phone. There are several other operating systems at your disposal that you can flip in and out on the fly if you're interested in using something else. Software, in my opinion, is going to be the most drastic change for many of you. There's no subway surfers. In fact, there isn't much of a formal mobile app store. In its current state, you should look at this phone as running a desktop operating system scaled down to work on a phone with SMS and calling support rather than a mobile operating system designed for phones from the ground up. But I actually have yet to use a Linux phone, so if you disagree with this assessment, let me know in the comments and I'd love to hear why you don't agree. This actually may be a perk for some of you that want a full desktop-like experience on the go and you don't want to rely on traditional applications built for only mobile devices. I know you people exist. Now, Anbox is a wonderful project that runs Android applications on Linux. There are some limitations of going this route, but it does work, so Subway Surfers on this phone is a possibility just inside a container with some limitations. That goes for almost any Android application. Your mileage may vary. No matter who you are, I wouldn't recommend this phone to you unless you've used Linux in the past, or you're down to learn and have some fun. A massive perk to this configuration is the fact you can easily connect the Pine phone to a monitor or docking station where it can now function as your home PC running on a desktop operating system. This is cool and gets my attention because I don't have a computer for myself, so being able to use my phone as a phone and keep all my programs and files in the same place as my computer would is incredibly convenient and makes my digital minimalist insides go burr. I'm looking forward to getting to use this at some point and giving more thorough thoughts on it, but those are some of my initial things that I think you should know. This phone is not for everyone, and that's okay. Even they say that. What now? Well, the initial production of the PinePhone Pro is strictly for partner developers and contributors, meaning you're probably not going to get one for some time. There are supposedly going to be Explorer Edition pre-orders geared towards you tech-savvy users opening later this year. Again, the phone is $399 before tax and shipping. The original PinePhone will still be an available option for you, so if you wanted to try this out for maybe a cheaper price, there you go, it's still out there. In its current state, I really don't think this is something you should be getting in the hopes of being 
an exact or even a similar experience to your current iOS or stock Android device. In fact, I would strongly discourage this phone altogether if you've never used Linux before, unless you're really looking to step out of your comfort zone. However, if you're willing to adapt to the phone's limitations and are ready for a fun ride, maybe you're a developer, maybe you want a phone to play with, or maybe you just want to financially support a company trying to build a legitimate alternative to iOS and Android devices, then you should consider this device. I'm personally critical of daily driving a Linux phone. We've made videos critical of Linux phones in the past, but I have yet to try it. So I want to give it a shot myself sometime in the near future. And by the way, this is coming from someone who's a digital minimalist at heart, who only relies on Signal, a browser, and KeePass for his mobile and desktop needs. No matter what, this is a major step forward for Linux phones, and we're excited to see this space grow, and that's exactly the mission that Pine64 is chasing after. Consider joining our Patreon, we love that, and rely on your support to make this content for free. Also, leave your comments on the PinePhone Pro below. We want to hear them. Thank you for sharing, and see you next time on TechLore.